Hey everyone, and welcome to my channel, Split Daisy. So today I'm going to be teaching you how to read a written pattern. I've gotten requests for this video because there isn't a video for every pattern that you want to make. And there's so many that you can find online in places like Pinterest, different blogs, yarn websites, and there are also lots of different books that you can get. This is one of my favorite books to make amigurumi, which are little figures, and toys like that, which I've gotten requests to make um, because I had some of them in my beginner blanket video. So those are really cool, and there's so many different patterns that you can find in other places besides YouTube. So being able to read those patterns is very important. So let's get started. Before you can even start reading a written pattern, you need to first find a written pattern. So the best places that I think to find written patterns are Pinterest, books, blogs, magazines, yarn websites, and there are so many other places. Pinterest is one of my favorite places to go to look for ideas and written patterns because it's able to connect you to other websites and people's blogs where you can find all of these different written patterns. Then you can save those pins and find them all later. Although they're not free, books are a really great resource for beginners especially because they usually have such clear and thorough written patterns and instructions that you won't typically find on other websites or blogs. So this is Amigurumi 2 by Ana Paula Romoli, and it's one of my favorite Amigurumi books because it is so clear and thorough, and I really like the patterns that are in it as well. You'll find that some of the figures that I showed in the crochet storage video, you can find the patterns in this book. So it's very good, and I highly recommend that you check it out. Now that we know where to find written patterns, it's time to learn how to actually read them. So one of the main things with crochet written patterns is that there are abbreviations that are used in them. SLST stands for slip stitch. So you insert, yarn over, come out, and pull through. This is generally used to make rings or circles. CH stands for chain, in which you yarn over and then pull through. SC stands for single crochet, where you insert, yarn over, come out, yarn over, and pull through both loops. HDC stands for half double crochet, where you yarn over, insert, yarn over, come out, yarn over, and pull through all three loops. DC stands for double crochet, where you yarn over, insert, then yarn over, come out, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. TR stands for triple crochet, where you yarn over twice, insert, yarn over, come out, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. YO is yarn over, LPS is loops. INC stands for increase, where you will typically do two stitches into the same stitch. All of this does differ from pattern to pattern, so make sure you read the directions carefully. In this situation, we have two single crochet into the same stitch. DEC stands for decrease, and it means the same as two single crochet together or two double crochet together depending on the pattern. So typically you have two unfinished stitches and then you complete them together. So we have one single crochet and another single crochet, and we yarn over and pull through all of our loops to complete it into one stitch. SK stands for skip, where you're usually skipping the closest stitch to the hook and inserting into the next one, although it could say skip two stitches and you just skip two stitches instead of one, so it just depends on the pattern. REP is repeat, BEG is beginning, CONT is continue, TOG is together, FP stands for front post while BP stands for back post, so in this you are wrapping around the double crochet instead of inserting into the stitch, so front post you're inserting while going from the front and completing your double crochet, whereas back post you are inserting from the back around the double crochet, yarning over and coming out and completing your double crochet. So this creates a more uneven pattern and gives it a lot of texture. So you can look at this baby hat that I made and so it has this front post and back post alternating on it. The instructions between asterisks, parentheses, and brackets are repeated, which can be a bit confusing, but we'll go into that later. Some patterns you'll say working in back or front loops only. So in a normal stitch, you insert underneath both loops of this V, then complete your stitch. Whereas in back loops only, you insert into the back loop, the farthest away from you, and front, you insert into the one closest to you. So this is normal stitches, and then this middle row, where you see the ridge, is back loops only. Now let's look at an example to see how written patterns can be structured, see whether it's a good fit for your skill level, and how to approach actually crocheting the pattern. The first thing you'll typically see is the skill level, although not every pattern has this. This one says easy, 2 out of 4, which indicates that it'd be good for all types of people. 
and you'll typically see materials. And because this is a red heart yarn pattern, they're going to promote their own yarn, but you don't need to use their yarn. You can use any colors you'd like. It'll also tell you the crochet hook size and other materials, as well as the gauge. So a gauge will tell you how to make a sample size and what the dimensions of that sample size should be. So that you can have the same final dimensions as this original pattern. I usually don't do it out of personal preference and I just like to get right into the pattern, but a lot of people really stand by it so you can do whatever you like. So if you're making the sample size and it doesn't turn out the same as the other one, so if you need to make it larger, use a larger hook. If you need to make it smaller, use a smaller hook so you can have the same gauge as the pattern. In some patterns, you'll find the final dimensions, special stitches, techniques, and notes, which are really helpful for beginners especially and make this a very clear pattern, but you won't find that in everything. Then you'll find the written pattern itself, which is comprised of those abbreviations that we saw earlier. So if you're a beginner, I would recommend printing out an abbreviation sheet so you can follow along and understand what everything means. I would also suggest skimming the written pattern to determine whether the stitches it uses are too complex or just right for you. The pattern is also broken up into multiple sections, especially for amigurumi patterns which have so many different parts. This makes it clear and easy to follow. Last, you'll find the finishing section which tells you how to finish it up and sew things together, as well as you may find some abbreviations which are very helpful if you don't have an abbreviation sheet. A few patterns will have a symbol chart, which is a visual way of understanding a pattern, and I won't go into all the specifics of it, but if you'd like a video on it, please let me know. Now I'll walk you through an example so that you understand how to approach a pattern and evaluate what it means from all these abbreviations and symbols. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, I just want to show you how to approach it with this small section. So we have the first part and it's the blanket and it says with A chain 71. So this letter corresponds to a certain yarn color. So usually in the materials list it'll say this yarn is A and this yarn is B. So you can just look at the beginning and it'll tell you what yarn to use. So then it says chain 71. Usually pattern will start out with a long chain for rows and it could start with a smaller chain and to make a circle for rounds. So we have some rounds here for the elephant's head and round can also be abbreviated to RND. So we have our chain and we begin row one. So it says double crochet and we know that's double crochet because of the abbreviations that we saw earlier. So then it says in fourth chain from hook and we have some parentheses. Beginning chain counts as first double crochet. So often they'll have little side notes or extra information for you in parentheses. It doesn't always mean to repeat something. So it's telling you that these four chains count as the double crochet. And usually at the end, it'll tell you the total number of stitches that are going to be in that row or in that round. So in this situation, there are 68 double crochet. So it's telling you those four chains count as a double crochet. Then it continues two double crochet in next two chains, and we have brackets, so we know that that means to be repeated. Skip next chain, double crochet in next chain, five times. So often it'll tell you how many times it needs to be repeated, or until what point it needs to be repeated. Then we have asterisks, and we also know that that means to be repeated. So skip next chain, two double crochet in next six chains. Then we have brackets, so that's a little bit strange that we have asterisks and brackets. So let's just read through the whole row and see what needs to be done. That's what I always like to do is read through it so that I know how to complete it before even starting the row. So we have our brackets. It says skip next chain, double crochet, and next chain, and bracket five times. So we have the five times. We know that this bracket will be repeated five times. And then it says repeat from asterisk to last four chains. Skip next chain, two double crochet, and last three chains, and turn. So we know it says repeat from asterisk to last four chains. So we're going to repeat this whole thing until there are only four chains left. So you're going to do this first part, repeat this middle part five times, and then repeat the whole thing. And then when you have four chains left, you'll skip the next chain, do two double crochet in the last three chains, and then turn. So it can be a bit confusing if there are multiple asterisks and brackets, but just read through the pattern carefully before you start the row so that you understand what the pattern is telling you to do. It can be a bit confusing, and it's not always going to turn out well the first time with a written pattern. All these abbreviations are pretty crazy, so it's not always going to be great. I recommend if it doesn't turn out well, just unravel it and try again. You have to be patient with it, so just keep trying. Another thing I would suggest is to cross off the rows that you've completed with a highlighter or a pen, so you know what you've done already and don't lose track. 
Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any video suggestions or requests, please let me know in the comments section. And if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel down below. I'm really close to 100,000 subscribers, so if you want to subscribe, please subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.